Welcome to Straight No Chaser. So grab a glass and join your host, your girl and BZ, Thin Bad, and the Chief. Welcome to Straight No Chaser, where we never dilute the issues, we only serve the hard stuff. It's your girl, MBZ, and as always, I am joined by the Chief. Hey, hey, hey. And are we going to have Thin Bad today? Yeah, he'll be on later. Okay, and Thin Bad. But tonight, I am so excited to introduce the guest that we have. So if you can hear that music in the background... It is the unmistakable, undeniable, and unbelievable sounds of Gladys Knight and the Pips. And here in the studio, we are honored to be joined by a music legend who really needs no introduction. He sings, writes, dances, manages, and anything else required of a music icon. And of course, I'm referring to Mr. Bubba Knight of Gladys Knight and the Pips. I am honestly pinching myself. Because it's not often that you get to interview or be around music royalty, really. So Indeed. before you had the Jacksons, the Bars, the Ohio Players, Jay-Z, Public Enemy, or any other icons that you could think of, there was Gladys Knight in the pips. So tonight, we're, we are going to talk about how this legendary group became so world-renowned, along, along with a whole lot more. Because, you know, I'm sure... Mr. Bubba has some great stories to tell. So, before we welcome him formally, let me remind the audience that you can call in at 702-425-7789 or chat with us live. We definitely want to hear from you. So, Mr. Knight, welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. Thank you. <laughs> busy. Yes, sir. Oh, my goodness. It's such a pleasure Man. to be here. I'm telling you to... Straight with no chaser. Yes, sir. Straight, straight and no chaser. That's hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Give it to you good. straight up. <laughs> thank you. This, that's such a lovely introduction. And thank yes, you so sir. much for that. I, I really appreciate it. Of course. I appreciate you being here. My honor. So let's jump right in. Tell us first when and how you got started in the business. Okay. We were having, uh, my sisters Gladys and Brenda was having a birthday party for me on the uh, September 4th, Labor Day, which is my birthday. And uh, one kid brought his record player. Mm. We weren't playing the records that he liked. <laughs> he took his record player <laughs> and went home <laughs> and left. he thought that he was stopping the show. Oh. But what happened was, we decided to perform to each other. Everybody got up and did an act. Did an act. Oh, cool! And, yeah, and and so Gladys, my sisters, and my cousins, we decided to sing to entertain the the people who were there at the party. Mm -hmm. And my mom ha happened to be in the window, in the back window, watching. listening and watching us. Mm. And when the party was over. She called us in the living room and asked us if we wanted to be, uh, would you like to be a singing group? Because wow. you guys sound great. Wow. wow. And I'm going like, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> Come yes. on, no. Uh -oh. Yeah, woo, woo. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how we got started. That's so exciting. Mm -hmm. And when, when you started to get out and perform and stuff like that what was that like like what what led up to everybody knowing who you guys were okay uh, my my mom her her nephew james woods mm -hmm. whose nickname is pip okay she put pip in place mm -hmm. to be our manager 
Okay. Wow. Pip was well known around Atlanta, Georgia, where we are all from. Gotcha. And um, Pip had a connection with a club in Atlanta called the Morocco Lounge, mm. who was having uh, the club was having a, a talent contest. He entered us into the talent contest. Oh my god! And gosh. you had to win like three weeks. Oh wow! Uh, three weekends in a row. Wow! So we won the first weekend. We won the second weekend, and the third weekend, we were losing. Dang. Oh, really? going like, we almost what? had, oh, man, we were losing. <laughs> <laughs> and this group from Morehouse College mm-hmm. who had who had studied uh, music, mm. they were professional music people. Mm. And their harmonies were like. On point. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> I mean, they, they were like uh, uh, the the. What, what do you call those guys that uh, seven after seven and yeah you know okay. that kind of harmony yeah and like they perfect were, they were killing you know <laughs> to the point where my sister uh, my sisters and my cousins went in the car and sat there and cried because they knew we had lost <laughs> <laughs> and, we, and so Pip Pip kept, kept, he came out of the club running and said hey you guys. Come on back in because it's a tie. Oh, wow. Whoa. Wow. Oh, it's wow. It's a tie. What? So we had an opportunity to redeem ourselves, right? right? Wipe and those tears. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm busy. What we did was we performed with a little more enthusiasm mm-hmm. and like with the attitude of, we're going to win this thing. Right. You know, and we got the audience involved. Nice. Look and that out. Made all the Look difference. out. Uh-oh. Wow. Uh-oh. Here we go. Yes. <laughs> and and they, they, they stood up, man, gave us a standing ovation. Mm-hmm. And the winner is the Pips. Because it was just the Pips. Right. And it wasn't Glass Night. Right. And we won that contest. Put, and the, uh, and, and what what the, the payoff was, we would have a... Uh, professional engagement at the Royal Peacock Supper Club across the street on Auburn Avenue mm-hmm. with all of the big time artists, oh, professional wow. artists. Okay. Like Bill Doggett. Well, you don't know about these people <laughs> I'm talking about now, I'm Hey, listen. You but, never I mean, know. you can look it up. You never know. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're absolutely right. Because, you know, I got an old soul. Uh-oh, uh-oh. So, uh-oh. I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and we performed with... Uh, Hank Ballard and the Midnighters and Fire Royals and Laverne Baker and uh, uh, D- Dinah Washington okay. and, and people of that caliber. Um, and we won that won that weekend, and the owner of that club loved us. Nice. And we he took us under his wing. Wow. And, and from that point on, he started booking us on shows that he had. Mm-hmm. We were open... We were open for for artists like uh, Jack Wilson, Sam Cooke, all of these kind of Jane Brown. Okay, you name them. Nice. You know, we worked with all of them. So that's, that's how we got started. Amazing! Yeah. Wow. We didn't have a record. I'm busy. <laughs> no, that's no record. No, nope. that's just from performing. That's talent. That's, that's raw that's talent. What, hey, that's what we call. That's from <laughs> selling it. Right. <Wow. laughs> but you know, I I love stories like that because you don't see that now. Like a lot of a lot of the performer, I wouldn't even say performers. A lot of the artists that have records out now that are Billboard, you know, top of the charts, they don't yes. even perform like that. Yeah, I mean, they perform live, but it's not a show. When you look back to you guys and the Jacksons yes. and that whole kind of era back then, yes, it was like an experience when you went to go see a show. Absolutely. And now it's kind of like a lot of the artists are just kind of <laughs> like they play the track and they just kind of go for yeah, it, exactly. I guess. <laughs> one, one, I'm busy. One artist that I have to say right now that impressed me at mm-hmm. this point is uh, Bruno Mars. Oh, he's amazing. Now, Bruno... He's amazing. He, he's got that old school kind of Feel. a thing going. Yes. Like what we used to that do. That funk, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Bruno mm-hmm. did. And and when uh, um, when Michael came along, mm-hmm. he had that old school feel as well. Mm-hmm. And he took from Jack Wilson, James Brown, Joe Tex, mm. all of these different artists that we had worked with, mm-hmm. and he studied them. Wow, and that's how Michael, but 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 he made them 
he made Michael be Michael. He put right. his own he put his own personality on it. on it. Yeah. But a lot of the things that he was doing and Prince. Mm-hmm. Let's not leave Prince out. Oh no. Yeah. That's one of the great. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> they performed. I mean yes. they, they entertained. Yes. You know? Like true entertainers. There you go. And that's what I feel I say that all the time because oh, my dad boy. and I talk about this all the time and uh-huh. it probably annoys him to death but it's like it because whenever I say it he goes who are you like how old are you <laughs> because I listen to music and I'm like you don't even get that same like organic chemistry from music Mm -hmm. because they use like the drum machines and stuff like that and that's cool and everything i'm not knocking producers Mm -hmm. but there's just something different about the chemistry and performance that you get from artists with a band yes and choreography and just raw vocals like it's just so different it's so different right it that that kind of music is sterile Mm. Yes. Mm. It's sterile. Yes. Talk about drum machines and all of that. Mm-hmm. It has no feel. Yeah. It's just like a robot. Right. They have a commercial on television loops. today. Yeah. <laughs> and it just loops. Yeah. And the crazy thing is if you watch if you watch performances um from like back in the day, mm-hmm. you would get there were artists that would become so carried away that the like the whole band would switch up. And yes. they would just you know, they might speed up like they might up their tempo or like they just might add a little bit more funk into it and like the whole band just seems like seemed like they were in sync the energy would just pick up as a whole and like you can't do that if your track is on a loop like... no, 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 no 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 you, you you'll be like uh uh millie millie, millie vanilli. Vanilli. oh no okay no, don't no. don't let that oh, no. don't hey oh, hey, no. hey i'm busy no. don't let that track get have a hiccup <laughs> don't let that track have a hiccup yeah, a hiccup. And, uh-huh. And all of now now what like, you going to Now what minute. you going to do? Oh, no. <laughs> what you going to do now? It's like, hold on. The, the lips not moving. What, what's going on? Moving. What's going on? Why yeah. the lips moving? There's no music. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yo, 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 I'm busy. This, uh, uh, but it's an art to that as well because I don't know whether you know this or not, but you just brought up something that I thought about back mm-hmm. in the day. When uh, uh, Soul Train first started. Oh, yeah. When Fro- when, when Don Cornelius mm-hmm. uh, first presented Soul Train, and mm-hmm. I have a story for you if you want to hear Oh, about, yes. About I'm here it. for it. Tell it. All right, okay, <laughs> I'm going to tell you a story. All right. like to hear it? Here it go. Yeah. <laughs> Don Cornelius came out of, chi- out of Chicago, mm-hmm. and uh, he wanted to start this, this television show, Soul Train. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, he came out to the Brown Derby. It was a restaurant in oh, yeah, California. I've heard of that. Brown yeah. Derby. That's and, a big restaurant yeah, for celebrities. Yeah. yeah. Back in the day, Brown Derby was... Mm. That was it, yeah. yeah. And, anyway, he was having a meeting with uh, with some backers mm. at the Brown Derby. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, uh, our manager told us about the meeting, and he wanted us to fly in from Las Vegas mm. to okay. go to this meeting Okay, uh, of this... This DJ out of Chicago was trying to start a TV show. Mm. So we went because, I mean, it was a brother. Right. So we try to give reach him out. some time. Yeah, yeah. We try to look out for each other as much as we can. Right? Yes. And we were performing at the Hilton mm-hmm. here in Las Vegas in uh, um, two shows a night. Wow. Anyway, we decided to go on in just because. He was a brother. <laughs> so we okay. flew in. First there. mistake. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. No, no, no. But uh, Chief, I'm telling you. And we got in there, and we we were in the meeting, and uh, Don Cornelius uh, told us that these backers mm-hmm. that's sitting in this room right now told me if I don't have a named star mm. or a named artist that has some recognizability mm-hmm. uh, that he they would not back him. Oh, wow. You know? oh. I mean, sponsors. That right. By, by sponsorship. They wanted to see big names. Yeah, they want to see names. Mm. And so we went there. So uh, I told him, I said, uh, Don, we, we're working at the Hilton. Mm-hmm. And we have a contract right. at the Hilton. Right. And <laughs> we can't miss shows and stuff like that during your 